Thanks for staying with us. The National Youth Service Corps is a program set up by the Nigerian government during the military regime to involve Nigerian graduates in nation building and the development of the country. There is no military conscription in Nigeria, but since 1973, graduates of universities and polytechnics have been required to take part in the National Youth Service Corps program for one year. This is known as um, the National Service Year, and over the years, NYSC has had both positive and negative effects on Nigeria. On the positive side, the program has been shown to promote national unity and cohesion. It has also been shown to develop the leadership potential of Nigerian youth and to promote self-reliance and entrepreneurship. On the negative side, the NYSC has been criticized for being outdated and no longer serving its purpose. It has been criticized for being poorly funded and for not providing adequate safety and security for its participants. Tonight, we're talking about youth service and the state of insecurity in Nigeria, and we're asking, is NYSC still relevant? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. NYSC. So I already know that NJ served in Abuja. Where did you serve? Ibadan. You served in Ibadan. OK, so I served in Lagos. So I think we have a good cross-section. <laughs> I think we're, we're only missing the east, right? But we have a good cross-section. So um, I want to start out first, before we, we move to insecurity, I want to you know, touch on what your NYC experiences were like. You know, We just talked about what the positives are, what the negatives are, um, what the real reason for it was in the first place, which is nation building. Um, so I'd just like to hear very quickly what your experiences were and what your thoughts were based on your experience. Was it a worthwhile um, experience for you, or could you have missed it? <laughs> um, if I'm to be honest, uh, I would say I could have missed it. Okay. There was nothing special about it. It just felt like we were in at some boot camp, you know, and some people just wanted to have fun. You know, have fun with <laughs> rich, poor, anybody that was. Mm wearing that uniform and you know it was just an opportunity for some people and to even get out of their house was that your first time in abuja when you um, served no, no okay okay no. so you had some experience with the town already yes okay. yes but you can never nyc in abuja is that it's in it's, like the deeper part of the is Inside the bush, <laughs> so it has that the, the um, orientation camp. Yeah, is. it has okay. nothing to do with like okay. town. Mm -hmm. So you're out two weeks. I think uh, my experience. I had a horrible experience on. Um, I think uh, the last day or the last major activity we had, mm -hmm. where you have to take this long walk around the yep, town, yep, yep, up yeah. a mountain, yep. down a mountain, yes. and we were wearing those khakis. Oof. Those khakis were the horrible. Shoes. Yep. The fabric was, do you know, at the end of the walk, mm. I did the walk, but I couldn't walk again. Yeah. Why? My thighs, the khakis had scraped my skin mm. so badly that they couldn't touch each other again oh. <laughs> like for a while. <laughs> you know, you have to lie down with mm. your legs so mm. we just mm. for it to dry up. It was like the the fabric that we I just it wasn't, we it wasn't meant suffering. for that activity. We were yeah. having showers outside because the bathroom oh, was an oh, eyesore oh. and it yeah, felt like funny. being back in boarding what house, and I didn't even just want to be close to that place. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it wasn't. A, we had people. Some of us had to buy um, pure water mm. and fill up a bucket yeah. just to take a clean shower because mm. you were not sure what you were showering with when you were. You know, you're yeah. not sure of the source of the water. It was colored. You know, it was. Come on, mm -mm. I felt like I was back in. Like I was back in. JSS1. So, so that was your, for all intents and purposes, that was your orientation camp experience? Yes. What about the rest of the year? Well, for the rest of the year, I, um, I ended, I got posted to uh, a telecoms company. Mm -hmm. And I think I had a wonderful experience there because okay. um, it was an organization that was, that had like a very future driven kind of outlook uh -huh. and strategy to their business so i was i found myself in procurement i i had the lovely boss who didn't see me as a, a youth couple but as uh, a procurement officer uh. so i was given tasks and very quickly 
I was, you know, I was given tasks. It's just that there's a limit to what they can give you because you're an NYC yeah. star. So there's a limit to the information. But I had a great experience working with them. And um, um, for some of them, I still, you know, keep in touch with some of them over the years and oh. just after some time. Yeah, so it was a great experience. And it really opened me up to, you know, that whole work life, okay. getting me ready for are, the work. Are you still in touch with any of your maybe people you met during the NYC experience? Yes, some of them are actually my, uh, some of my best friends right now, because we had, we have stories to tell. Hold on to that thought. <laughs> Alera, let's come to you. Uh, my, my NYC experience was pretty interesting. NJ's story was basically making me remember, <laughs> but I want to talk about the treatment. Yeah. Like how the soldiers treat coppers. Mm. The early morning waking up, they might pour water on you to wake you up, wake you up with whistles. Then in case you oversleep and they don't come to wake you up, they won't bother. They will just come when everybody's outside. And then if you're caught on the bed, you're not going to kneel down where, the, people, the military to, where, where people have their bath. Mm. Mm. So when NJ said, oh, people have their bath outside, then your punishment is that you're going to kneel down on top of that. Inside that the, the soapy water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for me, I was just, my, my question is why that, that treatment? Why? Do you have to be wicked to people? I know a lot of people that fainted during the standing under the sun and in the rain, which mm -hmm. is part of their um, mm -hmm. anthem, of course, that thing called. Um, during NYC, I didn't enjoy it per se. This but is camp see, now. In camp, yes. Okay. I, didn't, I did not enjoy mm -hmm. it at all because for me, it was just an unnecessary time. Like, there's mosquitoes everywhere. You're not eating well. You have to go and kill to eat some food. And then, you know, the rich people's children. I mean, markets. The governor's children, the politician's children, of course, we see what happened and there's nothing we can do about it. We'll just observe and maybe be their friends from a distance. Mami Market, everybody going to her friend. I mean, it was a good experience for some people, but I didn't enjoy it. Okay. Leaving, leaving NYC camp, I was posted to a school, a, a secondary school that I had to teach. And um, I only enjoyed, you know, being able to make impact on those kids because I saw what they were going through as children. Mm -hmm. I think my best experience is a girl, Lola Day, I still, we still talk today because she was a child in one of the school um, classes I taught. Yeah. But most of those people, they were, they're not really, they're, they're like, their educational life is not really so great. So for me, I felt, it felt good to be in that setting to experience that thing with those kids and help them grow and help them get better. However, like, she, like you said, it's underfunded because mm -hmm. with everything, including the NYSC uh, organization, including these um, secondary schools, when you see how everything is, you just mm -hmm. be wondering, what's the essence of all of this? I finished and I ran back to Lagos because I didn't want to have to the NYSC. Okay. Thing. So we have half was it really uh -huh. worth it? No, it wasn't. So I think I'm the complete antithesis to the both of you because, <laughs> I mean, the things you said about camp were true. Mm -hmm. The camp was horrid. I mean, I served in Lagos, but the camp was still not nice. And the bathrooms are still questionable, but we could still use them inside. Um, if you have to wake up really early, so as soon as they clean them, you make a beeline and take a shower beforehand. Um, I think I had a really negative impression. I think I've talked about it many times on the show. I had a negative impression when I was coming because I heard all sorts of horror stories. And I literally went in and I was like, okay, I'm stuck here for two weeks. You know, I'm going to try and make the best of it. And I had a blast, actually. Um, I carried color, I marched, I carried that, I carried the flag, I played volleyball. I tried drama for a little bit, but then it was clashing with carrying the, the flag and that was more <laughs> important to me. That was more fun. Um, and then I got posted, funny enough, to allow Sa. Ministry mm -hmm. of Information, and trust me, I was not finding it funny. The first day I got there, it was a... But in the end, I think I still made the best of it, and I had a fantastic time. You know, I'm still in touch with my boss as well. So all of these things, I think, the question for me in wanting to hear what your experiences were like is, the first part of it that says, is NYC still worth it? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I took away from that camp was meeting so many people from all over mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That for me, my camp was very well blended um, with people from all over Nigeria. So it was interesting to meet all these sorts of different people. You know, you just assume that everybody you meet, I mean, I, I grew up in Lagos, so you assume that everybody you meet um, has that similar experience. So meeting people from all over was really quite, for me, it was quite interesting. 
So from a, from a value perspective in terms of nation building, people that I have spoken to, I was even still talking about one yesterday, and she served in Kaduna, mm. and she was talking about how she misses it because, you know, food was growing everywhere, mm -hmm. the north, she didn't want to come back. Um, the, the concept and the context itself of what, of what NYC is, mm. I think the thing that it was meant for yes. is needed even more today than ever before mm -hmm. because we're so divided, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If we can get this right, the concept of you and I being able to see each other in that context, outside of I think yeah, you're Yoruba, I think you're yeah, I think you're yeah, all of these stories that we know are going around today, you know, the different tribal issues and things like that. I think that that NYC process is still needed today. It doesn't take away from the fact that the security is a problem. It doesn't take away from the fact that it's underfunded. We could say the same thing for education, but nobody's asking us sure. to scrap education, right? If you, if you take on one hand the number of kids that have been kidnapped from schools, and you take on the other hand the number of core members that have been, been kidnapped on the roads, the schools are way down here, mm -hmm. right? And the core, you know, so that's the perspective that I come from in saying that, yes, there are challenges, right? But that particular thing of giving people the opportunity to be around people who um, are different and have grown up in different parts of the country, I think is still really, really valid. Mm -hmm. So the idea now coming to, to hear your thoughts around the insecurity part of it, and before we even come to, I guess, insecurity for NYC and this clip that has been circulating again on social media today, um, that whole process of insecurity versus traveling on the roads why do we think the risk because for me I, when i saw this i was like is the risk any higher for core members than anybody else on the road no it's not actually it's not it's not because i mean core members are not working so like like they said you have to alert your friends or your family members to come and pay your ransom so mm. but it's it's the same thing as anybody else to be honest because most of these core members I mean, most people are just regular kids that are just finishing school. Yeah. So, and their parents are not so, you know, I mean, it's really crazy to see this kind of thing. Like, I was, I was really surprised when I saw that, um, that um, what I call it, disclaimer. I know, <laughs> we'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised when I saw that. Mm -hmm. But, um, like you said, I know people who on the road to Zizaria, which one is very, really, very, really far from Lagos. Like, like they took like four days, mm. and some of them were sleeping at bus park. And we know how dangerous these things could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is something that has been happening for a long time, like years, right? But now with the the prominent there, but like kidnapping is now very prominent, and mm -hmm. everybody is at risk. Yeah. So with that, they are just saying maybe it's their lawyer that advised them that will put it there so that it not look as if you guys are not. Mm -hmm. Not safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Alera. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's not any higher. It doesn't change um, their victims as much as the next person, mm -hmm. the working class. And you would even even wonder why they will take an NYSC. Maybe because they know that okay, parents definitely the parents will do yeah. anything yeah. to get their their kids back. But when it's an older person, they don't have money to. You know, that it will be considered differently. But is the thought behind putting it out there mm. that really... So now, let's, let's come to that. So I like the fact that you mentioned that. So I had said earlier that this, this clip is not actually new. Mm. So it, it, it showed up on social media first time, I think about two years ago in 2021. Okay. So this is like, a, you know how things just sort of mm, research yeah. on yeah. social media. So it's not new. Um, and when it came out back then, um, the NYSC actually came out to rebut it. So the first thing I think they said was, oh, there are many versions of their manual or their pamphlet around, right? So that was the first thing. And then they then had a, their press person who now came back and said, oh, it's been brought to our attention that this is circulating. And then they did a full disclaimer to say, this was not us, that yes, we have a manual that's been done by a retired security expert but this part is miscreants who are trying to take advantage. I mean, forget the fact that there were so many screenshots flying mm -hmm. around on social media, but let's even give them the benefit of the doubt, right? But in that document, it clearly was saying, if you are traveling on, don't travel at night. If you're traveling on these roads, then make sure somebody's ready to pay the ransom. And then when I even started to look, so in the last 
Chibok happened in 2014, right? Yeah. Um, so between 2014 and now, um, about, uh, from what I can sort of see, there's less than 100 core members that have been kidnapped mm -hmm. in that time. Um, some released uh, and, and various things. I think even the most recent one I saw was, uh, I think it was in August, where they said that um, two that were kidnapped somewhere around Kogi mm -hmm. were released. And in fact, the, the person who was speaking to it was speaking to coppers at an orientation camp and said, you know, these people have just been released. And then the focus consistently is on don't travel at night. So you keep, the burden keeps coming back onto the core members, which is why I asked the question earlier about where is the risk? Mm -hmm. Because if we are traveling at night, and most of the time, these guys are on their way to orientation camp. Because in my mind, I, I try to process these things logically. Like, so in a bus, do they announce, if you're a core member, come down. down. Or, I know that I see core members on the road, maybe during their CD days, they're wearing their, their uniform. uniforms. So when you're on your way to orientation camp, you don't even have your uniform mm -hmm. yet. So is this a, you know, when they say core members, in my mind, I'm like, is this how the story sells? When I just say, it's core, is it everybody in the vehicle that is being kidnapped yeah. or not? Right? Mm -hmm. But the, the focus, even with whether this is genuine or not, the focus kept on saying, you know, you need to pr pr protect area. yourself, take responsibility, don't travel at night. And the question for me is, why are these people traveling at night? Is, is it cheaper? Is it, um, you're travel. saying travel from approved bus parks. Again, is it cheaper? So I, what is the real root cause of this thing? Are you putting round pegs in square holes, which means I've told you now come and go to Zamfara, but I don't care how you how can, you whether you can afford to get to Zamfara. What, what I was even going to say is that the time and distance, it takes some people four days, which includes night. Mm. So is it that when the day is getting dark, everybody will not go and stay in the hotel and maybe rest Who's somewhere? Paying? Exactly. Yeah. And it's not like there are bus parks or bus station that are safe enough for people to actually sleep in. We have bus um, companies that have different states that they have offices. So if at all, they say, okay, maybe when it's 6 p.m. is getting dark, the bus park um, office at that state would have like a, an apartment or a hotel or wherever, right, that people can stay yeah. and then continue their trip the next morning. Then I also remember that back in the day when... Um, luxurious bus was was raining then mm. if you have to travel from lagos to onicha it's easier for you to go at night so that by by morning you've gotten you've to your destination and you're the able to traffic go, and yeah you're able to go to your like business that. and buy go to the market mm. on your way back you come back at night so that's how it has always been but now with the whole insecurity issue but my point is the journey from wherever they are to the nyc orientation camp take that, lo takes longer than 12 true. hours mm. so if you're giving the disclaimer that so I'm I'm be on the road so you're not giving, you're not even giving me an option so what do yeah. i do yeah you're not even so because i you know i have this a compulsory task for every nigerian but are you even creating an opportunity for it to be safe for us because you're putting it in my own hands and i don't even have the control yeah and these are people who are not even earning. They are children. Absolutely. They're not They're just earning anything. They're not earning money. We don't know the financial capacity of their parents. I mean, there's so many ways to take it. And the reason why I say that, right, is because when you come back to the insecurity side of it, mm -hmm. right, it's unsafe for everybody right now. Yeah. Everywhere. Everybody that is traveling on the roads, it is a risk that you take. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you tell yourself right now that you're going to drive even from Lagos to Ibadan, it is a risk that you're taking. So no matter what it is, even within the city, within this Lagos here Killing environment, and right? All that. There's all sorts of um, risk issues that right. insecurity is causing. So when we now come back and we say, because everything they've said so far is protect yourself, protect yeah. yourself. Yeah. Now, if I move away from core members and just come to kidnapping in general, mm -hmm. in the last six months, mm -hmm. I've had some kidnapping cases pretty close to me and the the feedback for all those cases were the same the authorities themselves are saying ain't nothing else to do let's figure out how we're going to pay and even the people who started let's, off it's, it's not let us well you get figure, out how, figure to out how to pay <laughs> and the truth of it is this didn't even matter i some of the cases were pretty people who had access to pretty Thanks. people that were pretty high up right and it, the feedback was still the same. There's no, we're going in there, we're going to go and figure it out, the security forces. 
these security forces themselves have now accepted, that's what it appears to be, that we've accepted that kidnapping in Nigeria is now is a going me? concern. So just pay, if you love your loved ones, pay and get them back. And we've seen that happen time and time again with the students who have been kidnapped from various um, um, educational institutions. The parents all come together and pay. So, because for me, it's like, let's distill the problems. Kidnapping and insecurity is a problem on this side. Yeah. Yeah. The poor administration of the NYSC program another is another problem. The NYSC program itself, for me, is not the problem. The objective is not the problem, mm -hmm. right? Okay. But what are we calling as where we are going for um, for these um, for these these kids that we're now sending out into the into the world? But I think we should take a quick break, um, and then when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us.